uh, the history goes, there are various theories uh, offered. One history says that the Jews came to India about 2,000 years ago, and they had a shipwreck near coast of Bombay. And that's how they came on the shores and they started leaving. India is a very unique country where it's a country of multi-religion society. So there are many religions. So this also happened to be one of the religions and it was ahead of the other religions which came, which followed, like Christianity. So since then, they have been in living in India. And Bombay, even today, remains the big center of the Ben Israels. There were some Jews who went to Cochin. They may have gone earlier. So they are called Cochini Jews. And the Baghdadi Jews, the third community, they came about 250 years ago. India is a very large country. It's about 1.1 billion people at present. So we are a very minuscule community, but we are one of the minorities. We have no anti-Semitism for centuries together. But when Israel was born in 1948, the Jews you know, had a lot of love for Israel, so they started migrating to Israel. The peak came in 1967 war. When the war was over, everyone just picked up their bags and said, going to Israel. After that, again it came down. So today we are 4,500 living in India. But this, we people think that we have a second home in Israel. It is the diaspora uh, ideology that you remain outside, but you, have, you support Israel from outside. Well, it has uh, been a, a wonderful experience growing up uh, in India as an Indian and as a Jew. Uh, in a, when we hear stories uh, from our uh, Jewish brethren or from across the world of anti-Semitism, of hatred, and uh, we never experience any anti-Semitism or hatred in India, you'll be um, awestruck to know that all synagogues in India are located in Muslim-majority neighborhoods with absolutely no stone being thrown at the synagogue, even in the worst times of violence in the Middle East. That goes to show the resilience of the Indian people. So even uh, as uh, there's a saying that you can take the Jew out of India, but you can't take the Indian out of the Jew. In India, uh, we have about uh, 5,000 Jews uh, remaining in the Mumbai area, mostly B'nai Israel, a few uh, Iraqi Jews, about 200. Uh, in Cochin, you have about uh, two to three dozen uh, Cochini Jewish community. In Calcutta, you have about... 30 to 40 uh, aging Baghdadi uh, Jews. And in Delhi, you have uh, mainly Bene Israel, about, 20 to, uh, about 30 to 40. And the city of Ahmedabad, where we come from, about a community of 150, and similar numbers in the city of Pune. So I am president of the synagogue uh, and secretary. I am associated with the synagogue for the last 25 years. And uh, I can... Uh, I can say that the biggest concern for us is imparting Jewish education and Hebrew learning. Now there, the role of the lay leaders, presidents, the community leaders is very important that they have got to keep everyone together. If they fail to discharge their duties, then things will start getting uh, difficult and people will not know that what is the religion, what are the festivals, so we as lay leaders, we ensure that people do come and they attend Rosh Hashanah, Kippur, all festivals they are supposed to attend. Then we also have Hebrew learning classes on Sundays. So these are the ways and means that the lay leaders will have to ensure that the Jews are kept together. And I'm sure that being in India, they will be learning so many languages, they will be having so many professions. So there should be no problem for this 4,000 Jews who are living in India at present, taking Israel as a second home. The rate of Aliyah from the Jewish Agency office numbers is about 150 annually. That is uh, either due to reasons of joining family in Israel, economic reasons, uh, or uh, just the fact that uh, you want to give a Jewish uh, future to your children. I think in India, the community that remains is stable, and uh, we hope that we will work towards ensuring that this community remains uh, thriving and pro in a country that has given us shelter and home for the last 2,000 years. And the 
attachment of diaspora Jews of Indian origin from the Israel, the United States, Canada, UK, Australia is tremendous to India. So I think, and we at the American Jewish Committee, which is co-sponsoring this evening's program, we work closely with the Indian government to ensure that uh, Jewish heritage sites in India are protected as well as preserved uh, for the future. Mr. Rubin would like to add something? I, I would, uh, Nisim has very rightly said that uh, we will have to see that our Jewish people are looked after and there should be no problem. The community will not thin down much more than this because it's a saturation level. And it's a globalization. We are living in a globalization era. So going to Israel or going to uh, USA, it doesn't matter. And all said and done, Israel is a population of 6 million Jews. But let us remember that there are 8 million Jews are living in diaspora spread out all over the globe. And that's how we say that the sun never sets on the Jewish people in the world.